is CNET 50, and this class is nearly over. It's a short-term class. I uh, see the first three meetings we've had. This is the fourth meeting, um, and the last one where I'm going to have uh, modules here. I might, might cover the last module the next time. I'm not sure. Anyway, so um, there's this class, one more, and then no new material on the last day. So I'm just going to talk about 10, 11, and 12. Um, let me start with that, which is here. Okay, so module 10 is creating reports and dashboards. And this stuff is um, important for things you give management to impress them. So reports are based on saved searches, and then you can share them or add them to a dashboard so that someone can just look at the report and they will see something like uh, top sellers this month or uh, customers who haven't paid their bills yet or things like that that are important. So you can, def they recommend having a naming convention for your reports. This is true of all database management systems. You should have some system where you say like sales report, quarterly sales revenue. So uh, you can find the documents later. So you run a search and then you click save as report. Now, by the way, I was going to demonstrate this. So I tried to use it on my boss of the sock machine and I noticed that my boss of the sock machine is kind of messed up and I just restored it from backup and that still didn't restore the full functionality. Um, you'll see here, these things up here don't work. And I don't even know what's caused that. That's new this semester. So my, perhaps it has something to do with my clock being years out of date. But anyway, we can do the important stuff, but some of the incidental features aren't there. And in particular, the Save As button is not there to make a report. So I don't know what's going on, but maybe the free version is limited or, or something. Anyway, um, we can look at it here though. She so saved something as a report. And then you can give it a title and a description and decide whether people should be allowed to change the time range. And then there's more settings available and you can make this into a dashboard that somebody can see. And so then people can just go to reports and click the report title to run it. And this will be something like report of failed purchases in the last 30 days. And this is the point of something I did long, long ago on an MS-DOS based database where you make something all ready to go so some junior member of the team that doesn't understand technology very well can run it and submit the weekly report to management by just running the saved search where they don't, they are not qualified to actually run the database tool in all its glory, um, but they can run a saved report easily. And uh, you can open it in search and then change the search and so on. And you can make tables and visualizations from it too. We'll talk about pivots next time in the next chapter, this time, but, or you can um, just choose a field from the sidebar and make visualizations. So if you have something like now this one, I can probably demonstrate actually. Let me see if it's going to work here. If I put up a familiar search here, like we did the main one that we did for the first part of Boss of the Sock was the uh, events that went backwards through the network. Let me get those up here. Okay, so we start with HTTP events and then put in the domain name. I'm really not batman.com, which is the name of this company. And then remove the ones from the vulnerability scanner. So that's not Acunetics. And search those over all time. And I get some events. And now all those events are going to go to the web server. So if I look at the destination IP here, that's the IP of the web server. And if I filter for events coming from the web server, I can filter for a client IP address and then replace that IP address with the IP address of the web server and get rid of this domain name. And I should find the nine events that went backwards through the network, which have been uh, the ones you use to answer the first batch of flags in the boss of the sock. And now that I've got these, we can play with a little game here. We can go to visualization of these nine events. And it will show us very visualization. Here's possible ways to get results. Uh, let's try a pivot and see if we can get it to work. Which field would you like to use? Um, I don't understand the question. Let's try the default and see. Your pivot cannot complete, all right? Does not exist or doesn't have the correct permissions. All right, like I say, I'm not having much luck demonstrating things with that boss of the sock, free spunk that doesn't seem to have all the features working. But normally in visualizations, you'll see a bar chart or a table. Um, and you can go here and you can have averages or top values or rare values and you can get a chart, these kind of graphs 
uh, which might be useful if there's something meaningful here, like number of products sold per month, so you can tell if your advertising is bringing in more business or something like that. Um, and you can get the top 10 values, which are the most common values. Here you see um, these are the types of games that were sold in decreasing quantity sold. Or you can go to the bottom, least sold prompts, and you can make a report out of that. All right. And you can change it to various types, just like you'll see in Excel. You've got pie charts and bar charts and these bubble charts and all sorts of things. So you can make it look pretty. Let me check online and see if there are comments. Um, what in the world? OK. No. Uh, all right. All right. And you can change the format many ways. You can choose the X and Y axis and the legend and all that, just like you could in a spreadsheet. So you can make, you can make pretty nice looking reports here if you have their local installer Splunk. My cloud install doesn't seem to have these features anymore for some reason. But all right. Um, so on statistics, you'll see a table where you see a strategy game. Here's how many were sold, and here's what percent of the total there are. This is a very useful thing. I used to use these all the time uh, to find outliers in databases to detect the errors in data. And that's something you have to do frequently when you are using data for AI training these days. Um, you have to find the outliers and remove them. You can make heat maps that will highlight the outstanding values, high or low values. Um, and you can make a dashboard. And a dashboard consists of panels that include reports. So you just have these panels. And the reason you do it this way is so you can have several different kinds of data presented at the same time. And you can reuse a panel in another report. So here we've got purchases by category, what type of things people purchased from the company. And here we got percent sales by category. So you know you can put these things there in ways that may please your management. So you can add a report to a dashboard and name it and save it. And then you can view it immediately, or you can have a list of dashboards to choose from. All right. And you can edit these things, of course. Everything is customizable. Uh, and you can drag the components around and lay them out to make them pretty. <coughs> and if you have one of these graphic dashboards, you can drill back to the query by clicking on one of the elements, like one of these slices of pie. And it will then take you back to the uh, the query so you can see the raw data or modify it to get back into search. So, you know, that's why you do it in Splunk instead of doing it in something like Excel. It's a living thing where you see the data in a graphical form, you go back to see the individual events, and so on. And you can copy dashboards and you can export them as PDFs or print them. Well, management usually loves PDFs, these pretty purports. And uh, you can choose which one is your home dashboard. So we've always used the search home for all the boss the sock stuff, but you can make a dashboard and make that your home. And that's what they do in the later boss the socks. The one we're doing is an old one. The later boss the socks, they have these sort of proprietary dashboards with things they think are useful, and they want you to use those. And I find them to be just irritating and get in the way. As far as I'm concerned, just giving me a plain search interface is the most powerful and simplest. But I was a database administrator, so I'm used to doing that. These uh, graphical things I find are just obstacles to me, but maybe not to others. And you can then your default view would look something like this with the dashboard there. All right, so that's dashboards. And then there's pivots. Pivots and data sets are another way to express your data. So you can visualize data with a pivot. Um, and what you do is you'll see a count of objects. These are the objects that you see in a query. You run a query, so you see something like successful requests. In the database you do for the uh, built-in Splunk stuff, this is where the successful people who bought a game. So it looks like half a million people bought a game. And then you can pivot that, um, choose a time range, and then you can split the rows. So you choose what you want to break it out by. Now, if you don't by default, all you have is the total number of items that were returned by the search. But if you break it out by category, that's the first pivot, then you'll get a chart showing how many in each category were bought. This many strategy, this many archive, this many accessories, and so on. So that's just one way to see a report breaking it out. Now notice there's no total, which is pretty rude. You almost always want the total, so you have to go to some special thing to add totals. And now you get the report that anybody would expect to see, where you break it up into categories, you show the categories, and then you put the total here. But you might want even more detail to subsplit each of these categories by another parameter, and that's what they call pivoting. So you can split columns and also split by product name, 
And now you get this kind of chart. Here's the strategy games, here's the total, and here's the individual games. You have total for each of them and totals down here. And you know, this is the kind of chart you'd have to see a fairly complex data structure in all its glory. All right. And you can filter it so you see only games above a certain dollar amount or within a certain time range or any other criteria you may want. And that's a filtered pivot where you see all this data and you have included other filters. So this is useful. All right, and you can visualize it as bar charts and other kinds of charts as well, as you would imagine. So it's a lot of work to write all this stuff. This is why you pay so much money for a product like Splunk. You get all this ornamental stuff, uh, which you wouldn't get with the open source stuff, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, which would give you just the facts, but then it would be up to you to export it into Excel or something and do all this. These are all convenience features. All right. And you can mouse over an object to reveal its details. You can click on an object to go back to the underlying search. That's drill down, just like before. So it's pretty interactive to hunt through the data. All right. So these instant pivots is a way to go to this. And you can save a pivot as a report. And you can put a pivot in a dashboard. So you know. Um, all right. Let me check and see if there's comments online. Uh, no new ones. All right. And then there's lookups, which actually bring in more data. This is uh, a fairly common situation. Suppose you have data in the database, like say an IP address, but you would like to know what country people are in. Now you don't have a field with the country in it, but you can get the country from the IP address. Or you might have a product number, but you don't know the product name. And so you, don't, you can add this kind of data to your database with a lookup. A lookup is a static table. It just connects data to other data in like a comma separated value uh, setup. So you have something like this here. You have product IDs are all you have in your database. So you're going to add product name, category, price, sale price, code. All, you, all the database has is this, but you include this comma separated value table so you can refer to these other items that are useful to you that are just uh, dependent on that name. So you import this thing. This is called a lookup. And once it's in there, then you can refer to all these other items. And you can make the lookup automatic, so it automatically includes it in all queries. And uh, then you can use these other terms here, like product name and category ID, that were not actually present in the original events. The lookup is now included in the, in the database. So there's another convenience feature. All right. And so you input lookup below the results from lookup if you didn't make it automatic. And uh, all right, and you can also have all sorts of uh, details like the number of matches for each input value, how you're going to handle it, if there are duplicate lines, and so on. Um, and there's a lookup command. If you don't run it automatically, you can add the lookup command to your search to include this lookup in just this one search. All right. That's a useful one. I've used that one. Um, all right. And here's an automatic lookup that will just automatically run so you don't have to refer to it autom in, uh, specific explicitly in your searches. And I think that's it. Or you can also have ones that are related to time. I haven't done that. But you could somehow link it to the time. All right. And that's as far as I plan to go. Let's see if there are comments. And there aren't. So I'm going to stop this. Oh, let's go to a Kahoot. There's a Kahoot to go with this stuff, uh, which is here. Here. All right. I think I need to make this a little bit higher. There we go. So you can play if you want. Go to kahoot.it and put in that number.
All right, let's give it a shot. All right, so which tab will show a bar or a line chart? Your visualizations tab. All right. I keep using it by accident. I almost never want to see that. All right. Where's what's a set of panels displaying data visually? That's a dashboard. Good. All right. And which item will pull data from a standalone file to use in searches? <clears throat> All right, and those are lookups. The most useful of the batch, in my opinion. All right. All right, so let me stop that recording.